Hello everybody, Deathblade here. At the time of this recording, it's about 11 p.m., so I'm just getting ready to go to sleep, but I had some things I wanted to talk about really quickly. These are a couple things that I've noticed brought up in comments quite a few times in the past, and especially recently, so I thought it now would be a good time to talk about it. This recording will contain some minor spoilers, uh, nothing plot-related, but it will contain some minor spoilers in terms of the world building and the universe of I Shall Seal the Heavens, just some minor things. But if you're a stickler for spoilers, you might want to skip this recording. Also, any information that I talk about in this recording, please don't reveal in the comments section of I Shall Seal the Heavens. Okay, so I'm going to talk about two different things. I'm going to talk about the confidence or perhaps the arrogance that the cultivators show in the story. And I'm also going to talk about the number of cultivators in the story. First, let's talk about that confidence or arrogance. I've seen it come up multiple times about how stupid it is for them to instantly assume whenever they run into somebody else that they're going to be able to destroy them and they're so arrogant about it and then turns around and they get killed. This happens a lot with Meng Hao. Well, when you talk about the cultivators in general, I think it's really important to think about how Argon portrays them. And this will become even more apparent in the upcoming chapters that have yet to be released as of this recording. So please pay attention to how he portrays it. He doesn't come out right and say it, but he portrays it in a very clear way. The way that he portrays it is that the vast majority of cultivators don't have very much experience in going out and, you know, having adventures. Actually, this point has come up before. If you think about it, when Meng Hao's legends were recounted from the perspective of the cultivators of the southern domain. Now, we're talking about probably literally hundreds of thousands, millions of cultivators, to them, all the different things that he experienced were the stuff of legends, things that they could barely even imagine happening, one of them, let alone multiple things. Now to us, it's become kind of commonplace because we've followed along with the journey. And as far as other Xianxia stories, probably the same thing. But the point is, for the average cultivator, that's not the normal thing. The normal thing probably is they stay home most of the time practicing training and stuff like that. Occasionally, maybe go out on some kind of mission or something. But for the most part, they're not engaging in these monumental adventures. Now, couple that with the fact that there are a lot of different sects and clans. Don't forget that in I Shall Seal the Heavens, Meng Hao has almost exclusively associated with the top sects and clans. If you want to liken it to the college system in America, basically Meng Hao has hung out in the Ivy League. Now that doesn't mean that there's no other colleges and universities in America, and it doesn't mean there's no other sects and clans in the Southern Domain and in Planet South Heaven. In fact, there's a lot that was made evident in the war arcs that we recently experienced in the Southern Domain. So the point is that there's a lot of clans and sects out there, and guess what? Each sect and clan has its own top dog, right? And each of those top dogs is most likely familiar with their circumstances and their environment in which they are the kind of person who it doesn't matter who comes up against them, they're going to be able to destroy that person. Unfortunately, if you take the top dog of Podunk Community College in Nobody's Ever Heard of Itville, USA, and then send that guy to the top dog of Harvard, well, there's probably going to be very little comparison. And that sort of relationship can expand out throughout the entire universe that we're seeing unfold in front of us in the story of I Shall Seal the Heavens. And now we're going to get into the second point, which is the sheer number of cultivators that we see. And actually, this is something that me and other members of the team were chatting about recently, which is in this recent tournament arc, all of a sudden there are literally tens of thousands of Tao-seeking experts. And we're thinking, how is that even possible? On Planet South Heaven, there were dozens at most, maybe, and all of a sudden there's tens of thousands. Well, and this is not getting into any spoiler information. This is just my observations when I got to this point in the story because I was thinking about the same thing. The first thing I thought of was, okay, let's hold on a second. We're talking about Planet South Heaven, which we know is part of a group of four planets that orbit the ninth mountain. 
Now let's think about this for a second. Earth is part of a group of several planets. And of course, Earth is not the largest of those planets. Now again, we're not getting into science here and the inhabitability of said planets. But in the end, Earth is a medium-sized or maybe even small-sized planet in our solar system, and it is orbiting around a sun which is vastly, vastly larger than the Earth itself. If you're not a science nerd, go on to Google and do a search about it and see how much bigger the sun is than the Earth. Now, I'm not saying that the Ninth Mountain is that much bigger than planet South Heaven. Again, this is not spoiler information. This is just some kind of speculation that went on in my mind when I was reading it. But if you think about it, Planet South Heaven is a tiny microcosm of the entire ninth mountain and sea, which in and of itself is a small part of the entire mountain and sea realm. So when you consider the ninth mountain, the ninth sea, the four other planets, and in a recent chapter it talked about other small worlds that are connected to it somehow, I think we're talking about a vast, huge number of locations where there are cultivators, sects, clans, churches, schools, whatever you want to call them, all of whom are training cultivators. The fact that there's tens of thousands of Tao-seeking cultivators probably isn't a very exaggerated number. Okay, there's more to talk about on this subject, but it's getting late for me, so I think I'm going to call it a night for now. I hope this has been informative, and I'll talk to you later.